Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got an Asus laptop here. This is, uh, it's a TP412F laptop and it does not post. So um, we push the power button. Ah, I push this button. And the power light on the side comes on, but nothing lights up on the screen. So um, that's all we know. Now it's time for some voiceover. I actually wasted a lot of time on red herrings with this laptop, including talking about possible faults that turned out to be not at all relevant to this device. And as a result, the video was in danger of being two hours long. So we're going to skip ahead onto sections where I'm actually heading in the right direction so we can get on with the useful part of this video, which is identifying a display fault and dealing with the touchscreen of this device. So as you can see, the amount of time I've been waffling, nothing has appeared on the screen. So one of the things I'm looking out for when I turn it on is I want to see if the screen has lit up at all. So I'm going to do this now by turning it off. So I'm going to hold down the power button. I'm going to look very closely at the screen as I turn it off and see if there's any reaction. And there was not. What I'm looking for is when I switch it on or off, the screen will get ever so slightly lighter or darker for turning on or off respectively. Um, and that slight change in tint, that might be the backlight switching on or off, or it might be the screen initializing. When an LCD is off, it will actually be a slightly lighter shade of gray than when it is on. Because when it switches on, it will default to black, and on and black is slightly darker than off and just gray kind of thing. Um, but on modern screens, modern anti-glare screens like this one, it can be extremely difficult to spot this. So take that with a pinch of salt. But if you do see any kind of reaction, that starts giving you information. And that's what it's all about with diagnostics, is gathering information. There we go. Right, screws are out. Let's see if we can take this cover off. Looking for an entry point. Hacker voice, I'm in. Okay, so this is a fairly modern laptop. We've actually got an SSD in here and no hard drive, which is nice. Uh, got a fingernail as well, that's always nice. Gross. Um, so uh, the two things, um, well, the first thing that is notable is there is no CMOS battery in this laptop. Uh, we don't have one of those. Now, what that also tells me is that the CMOS um, and the real-time clock by extension is powered from the system battery. So what I'm going to do is unplug the system battery. And this is the next thing that we would try anyway as part of the process. So we're going to unplug that for a couple of minutes and we're going to disconnect it. Okay, we've had that unplugged for a nominal amount of time. Let's plug that back in again. And... Because I've got the back cover off, I'm going to be very careful when reopening the laptop. I'm going to slide my fingers down the sides so I can open it right down next to the hinges. And that avoids putting unnecessary strain on anything. And I'll plug the charger back in and switch it on. Charger in. It has turned on by itself. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Was that the CPU fan I just heard? Yeah, the CPU fan is spinning, so it's not brain dead. There is heat in the CPU. So the system is alive, that's a good sign. Um, it looks like we might have BIOS issues with this one in that case. Uh, let's see, I could plug in a HDMI cable and see if there's any output from there. Um, I don't think that's going to help us, though, to be honest. Let's do that anyway, though, just to check. Because I did say that I would try the simple things. I think this is actually going to be not simple, and we're going to be reprogram a, reprogramming a BIOS. But uh, we'll try. Right, HDMI cable plugged in the side. 
Now, different laptops are going to behave differently for this. Um, by and large, most laptops should just spit out something on the HDMI port if there is a monitor connected when you turn it on. But it is going to vary. Um, you might have to disconnect the internal screen to force it to output. So uh, where is the screen connected on this? It's there. It's very easy for me to get to that on this. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to unplug the charger and I'm going to disconnect the battery again. We always do this before we touch the display cable because the display cable um, does not always have, but often has, always hot lines on it, which means there are some pins on this that always have power to them, even when everything is turned off, uh, which means when you disconnect the display, there's a danger of shorting one of those lines to ground and blowing up the backlight fuse or shorting power into a data line, all of that kind of thing. So let's unplug the display. So now the laptop has nowhere to output to except HDMI, which means if it is going to boot, we should get the BIOS screen going to the HDMI port because that will be the only out, uh, only valid output detected. So I've plugged it in again. No battery, the power has turned on automatically. I don't like the way it keeps doing that. See if we get anything at all. Aha! Right. We have a post screen. So given that the laptop is actually starting, it looks like we're about to head into, yeah, so we've just headed into Windows Recovery, which is not surprising because it's had a lot of false starts. Uh, good, okay. So this tells me, so it's not a BIOS issue. This is probably a display issue. Um, so remember what I was saying about seeing the screen light up and stuff like that? We've had absolutely nothing out of this. So that kind of supports the theory that this is a display issue. On pretty much any other laptop, I'd have expected to see something from the display. Um, so what we need to do now is uh, we need to figure out how to open this up. Um, I would like to plug in a different display. I've probably got a spare one that I can test with. Uh, so I'm going to take off the display assembly so I can carefully try and open it up and get to the other end of the display cable. So let's take the display assembly off this laptop. Battery's disconnected. We're going to disconnect the display once again. And can I get that out from under the cooler? No, I'm going to have to take the cooler off. That's annoying. Also, I forgot to mention at the start of the video, but welcome to the new mat meta. I've got a new desk mat which I'm using because the old one was just getting very, very grossy and it was time for a change. Um, I wanted to get something lighter um, that would... because the problem with the old one is it was quite dark and it was often forcing the camera into low light mode. So when I put my hands on screen, my hands would blow out the camera. Um, so by having a lighter mat, it's forcing the camera to go into a much lower uh, or high lower exposure, which keeps everything nice and sharp and in focus and high. Um, but I also appreciate the fact that that's making the picture a lot brighter. So let me know what you think. Is the brightness a problem for you? Because the reason why I chose this particular mat is that it's got where it's got this forest effect on it. We've got different shades of grey here, so I can actually sort of look and look at the different shades and see which ones are overwhelming and which aren't. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I like the lighter colour, but I think what I might end up going for is looking for like a solid grey one that's like this grey or something. So it's lighter, but not glaringly white or something like that. Let me know what you guys think. For now, let's try and get this thing open. So I'm just going to see if this chin um, bar comes off the bottom, because that might reveal more to me. Yep, that's going to just uh, pry off. So I'll just carefully pick away at that. There we go. Being very careful where I'm up against glass here. 
I'm going to try and pry from the bottom where I'm not against the glass. There we go, that's working. Right, so this has revealed the bottom. There's where the display cable goes into the bottom of the screen. This doesn't get me to where I need. I need the actual display to come off. So let's see how this works. Now on touch screen laptops like this one, the entire front glass assembly will come out. It's just a question on whether it needs to slide in a certain direction or not. And it's very difficult to tell unless you already know. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and have a bit of a pry and just see if anything wants to come off. So I'm going to go between the metal and the rubber surround. See if I can make any headway. Nothing that feels promising. At this point, I realized that the front glass was glued in on this device, which is uncommon for most laptops like this, but evidently not unheard of. This means that diagnosing a bad LCD panel isn't as simple as just plugging in a test panel and seeing if we get a picture. Given that my strategy for glued in panels is just to replace the entire display assembly, we'll move on to some other things that we can check for to confirm that this is a bad display and not a motherboard fault. So that way we know that it is just a matter of replacing the display and not anything else. Okay, I think I'm going to YOLO this because um... Uh, we're probably going to need a new screen, which is going to be a new display assembly, or it's going to involve removing this anyway. So I'm going to give that a go, and I think it's going to go terribly. But before I do that, I want to make absolutely certain um, that I, there's no other information I can get. So I'm just going to plug the screen back in again, and I'm going to power on the laptop, and I'm going to shine a torch into the screen just to see if we have any kind of picture Okay, so we know that the laptop is running. I'm going to start shining a light into here. I'm going to turn off my overhead lights just so I've got less glare. Ah, that's what I wanted to see. There. See that Asus logo? BIOS set up. The display is on. There's just no backlight. This is exactly what I was check what I wanted to see. A no backlight fault is usually going to be one of three things. One, a bad LCD panel. Two, no power to the backlight. Or three, a missing enable or brightness signal to the LCD. It's fairly easy to check the backlight power by looking for a large capacitor or a backlight fuse near the display connector. We can see 19 volts from the charger here. This goes into the LCD panel where it gets boosted up to backlight voltage, so no problems here. The enable and brightness signals are harder to deal with. If we had a schematic, it would be easy to check which pins were these signals and measure them. But there's no schematic available for this motherboard. This means our best bet is still to replace the panel and hope for the best. If we're going to throw out the old display assembly, it doesn't hurt for me to try and take it apart because then at least I can pull the display cable out and use that to test another panel. So we'll move on to attempting a front glass removal. Okay, measurements are getting me nowhere. It's time to yellow the screen off. I have no reason to believe that this is anything other than a bad screen. So, right, nozzle off the hot air gun. I fashioned myself a plastic knife to start seeing if I can cut under, because I don't... Normally you'd want a, like a guitar picks for this, but I don't have any of the thin ones because I don't do this anymore. Um, so I fashioned this plastic knife. Let's see how we do. I'm going to just start heating this lower edge and seeing if I can get in under here and make a start. If that starts going well, then we'll progress around. For now, I'm just blowing air onto this and just putting some warmth into the glass. Not going to linger around for very long. If I did this properly, I would have one of those gel um, like gel bags that you would heat up and leave resting on it. But I do not have one of those. So this is not really the correct way of doing this, but we're going to see if this works. I used to use this method for MacBooks, but with those you don't have an LCD bonded to it, so it's a lot easier. 
Okay, there we go. There's some heat in that glass. Let's see if I can get under it. Well, something is happening there. It's not the end of the world if we crack this screen because we could go for a glass only replacement or rather glass and LCD only. It's mainly just a matter of getting it off without leaving broken glass everywhere. I think this is worth a shot. Just not sure how deep I need to go and where. Okay, we're going to just fast forward through all of this while I just heat and pry around the edges. This bit's not going to be a walkthrough per se, because this is not the correct way to do this, or there are better ways, I'm sure. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, also, this is going to take forever. Let's just get on with it. Oof. There we go. I've managed to get my thick uh, guitar pick underneath the glass. Now this is a good start because it's now putting tension on the glass that's trying to lift it away. Which means that the glass should be... will not stick back down after I've released it. So... I like how I made a spe specific tool for doing this and then immediately didn't use it. This seems to be going quite well. Okay, I'm making very solid progress here just by heating and slicing. It's very tempting here to just try and keep cutting in, but where in the areas where the glass is cold, it suddenly gets very difficult very quickly, and I have to resist the urge just to start brute forcing it. But the moment this cracks, this is going to get a whole lot harder because I'll have to clean it all up. Whereas right now... It's actually coming off very cleanly. I'm not sure if the heat is damaging the LCD, but at this point, I believe the LCD is toast anyway, so I don't really care. However, I've just got my hot air on maximum air, 200 degrees C, no nozzle, and it's doing a very good job of just getting the glass up to temperature. I'm just flying around and just using my fingers until it's just uncomfortable to keep my fingers on the glass. And... Over the areas where the LCD is, it's not heating up much, so it looks like that's rejecting the heat. It's just where we're up against plastic, where the heat is holding. And we're actually heating glue, not air. There we go, look at that. Into the next side. Easy. There we go. Just along the bottom now, and we're there. If this goes well, this is going to change my world on dealing with bonded displays like this. I had it programmed in my head that this would be a lot harder. So maybe it's time for me to start looking at bonded glass displays again. And no, that's not going to be tablets and phones. That's still a big no for me, but certainly for... Um, touch screens like this this could be a bit of a game changer for me or I may have just cooked everything here there we go 
And I was scared of it. I was scared of it. Easy. That was, I could not have asked for a more textbook example. Let's get this disconnected. Now we can plug in a test screen and see if the backlight lights up. Now what this also means now is that, ah, all I have to do now is buy this, the glass digitizer with LCD bonded to it. I don't need to get an entire display assembly now. And that's probably going to half the cost of the replacement parts for this. Maybe even drop it down to a reasonable price, like, you know, say £100 for this, instead of £300 for an entire display assembly. This is a good end to the day. Just, just getting this off is really good news. Well, assuming it's a bad screen. Let's get a, dis let's get a replacement panel. Okay, here's a 15-inch panel. This is the wrong size for the laptop. However, it's a 30-pin display, so it will be electrically compatible. Um, as long as you've got the same 30-pin connector, you can plug in almost more or less whatever you like with these days on laptops. Doesn't work so well on older stuff, but uh, it works just fine here. So as you can see, we're, we've now got this oversized LCD. However, this is good enough for testing. And in case anyone's wondering about the layout I'm using to test with here, um, the laptop should go this way round. However, on this one, it's actually quite easy for me to put it in upside down like this, and the display cable is long enough that I can just twist it around and plug it in. It's not very often you can get away with a test setup this simple. However, it's worth um, it's worth having an experiment to see how you can lay the laptop out, because if you can lay it out in such a way that you can run it all open like this, it makes testing so easy. It's very handy. Okay, here we go. Uh, power in. Laptop turns on by itself. And the display... The display... doesn't come on. It could be... Ra oh, there it goes. There we go. There is backlight and picture. There we go. All right. It's just a bad screen. That's all this is. It's just a bad screen. Good. All right. Happy days. So all I've got to do is get a replacement screen. So um, I'm going to go and source a replacement screen, and I shall get back to you. All right, we're back. And I've got some new stuff, I think. Ah, that's the new one. This is something else. I've got some new stuff. So let's open this guy up. Ah. As you can see, we've got some new adhesive strips and a shiny new display. Now, because I've been sent some new adhesive strips, which look like fairly generic stuff, if I'm honest, but that's fine. Uh, I might need to cut it to size. I think these strips are too wide. Yeah, I'd say they are. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, uh, the remains of the previous um, adhesive, and then I'm going to take this and line the sides with it, and I'm just going to cut it to fit using a uh, sharp knife, a crafting knife. Um, so I'll do this on fast forward, um, but it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to scrape everything off, mostly with my fingernail, but if you don't have fingernails, you could use any kind of scraping tool of your choice or, you know, like one of a uh, metal prying tool or something like that. So let's get to work on that and get the replacements adhesive in place. Um, and I'm not going to remove both sides of the backing yet, just one side, so that way I can do a very quick test fit and test of the screen before we commit to sticking everything down. So, let's get to it.
Right, that's my adhesive tape in place. There's some slightly rough edges where I've cut along the sides there. It was difficult to get a straight cut because there's magnets periodically to hold the laptop shut and they keep throwing off my knife cut. Um, but it doesn't matter, they don't need to be straight, no one's going to see them. I've just removed enough of the material that it's not going to jam up because I don't think there's enough space between the recess that the screen sits in and the screen itself. So if I just try and jam it in there, it's just going to jam up and not, and the, the, the strips physically won't fit. So anyway, that's that. Let's plug this guy in and just make sure we get a picture. I've no doubt we will, but can whenever I'm gluing something in, I don't mind putting in a load of screws and not testing because the worst thing you have to do is just take out screws again. But there's nothing worse than gluing something in and then finding that it's not good. So, yeah. Uh, right, body of the laptop. Hopefully the battery's got some charge in it to save me the trouble of getting the charger again. Where's the power button on this thing? Side? It's on the side. Power. Might take a moment to post because it's been sitting with the battery disconnected. There we go. Happy days. Good. 4%. Well, that's enough for me. Right, let's disconnect that again. So now I'll lift the screen back up a little bit. Uh, actually, yeah, we can just flip that all the way out. And we'll take the backing off of the adhesive tapes and I'm going to stick it down. You may have noticed I've not put new tape along the bottom. Um, I could, however, I don't think that will be necessary. And whenever I'm replacing screens, I tend to go with the less is more approach. Um, some people will disagree with me because there are some people out there that have had bad experiences with um, replacement um, adhesive strips where they've come off come astray after a day a week a month um, I have not had any such problems when doing laptop screens I used to have this problem back when I used to do iPads and iPhones um, but I was using pretty crappy double-sided tape in those days um, these days using modern um, double-sided tape uh, I don't seem to have any issues with that and I tend to put just a little bit less on because it will hold the screen down just fine but it means that if anyone else has to remove this screen, because there's none along the bottom, it just takes away the hardest part and means that there's just half a chance of it being done again. Same reason as when I encounter laptops where the panel has double-sided tape on the back, I'll often only put just a square in each corner because it's still going to hold the screen in just fine. But it means if the screen gets broken for a second time, whoever, whoever is the next person to fix it will just have an easier time. Um, because you never know, the next person to work on it might just be you. And you'll thank yourself. Ask me how I know. Um, so yeah, right, let's guide in one corner. And then the other top corner. Because those are the bits that need to be right. And I'm just going to lay this down. I'm not going to press it down because at the moment I could probably lift it again if I had to. So we're just carefully looking to make sure that everything is okay. And when we know that everything is okay and nice and aligned, we'll actually press it down. This is looking very good, actually. I haven't even pressed down yet, and it's flush. I think we're going to get a very nice finish here. Very good. Right, how's our chin strap? That's going to go on just fine. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to commit to this. So I'll grab a microfiber cloth. And now I can just pinch the screen on both sides but with using the cloth and just pinch and just wipe down. And same with the other side. Pinch and wipe down. And because we're using this microfiber cloth, I just glide along, whereas my fingers would grip and go and just rub and squeak and just bleh. There we go. We still nice and flat up there. Excellent. Uh, we've got no. We don't need to worry about the um, webcam because that's down here. Uh, yeah, we're good. I'll take off this um, front cellophane layer at the very last moment. Let's reconnect the touch sensor wires. 
So for these touch sensor ZIF connectors, zero insertion force, I've just guided each ribbon into the connector and we just need to poke it around until it sits nicely. That's not right. That's just gone in horribly. So I'm just going to gently nudge this guy about. They'll take a little bit of abuse, these ribbons. This has gone horribly crooked and jammed into place. Let's try pulling on this side. Oh, these tweezers are no good for this job. Let's try some different ones. There we go. There we go. Now that's in nice and straight. That's what we want. Now you'll notice that these ribbons are just sticking up slightly. Um, that's concerning me a bit. What I'm going to try and do, I'm just going to see if I can flatten these so they bend downwards into the recess instead of sticking up because those are going to be put pressing against this plastic chin strap and that concerns me. I don't like that. I'm going to just see if they'll go downwards. That seems to be okay. So now when we press down on those, they've actually been they've been angled so they'll go down instead of just being smushed, if you see what I mean. That should be okay. Now this chin strap was just uh, clipped in place, I believe, so I'm going to go ahead and just stick that guy on. Um, there's no plastic lens on this webcam. If you do spot a plastic lens, probably a good idea just to try and wipe that down on both sides to keep it nice and clear. Watch out because it'll often be soft plastic that will scratch easily. And scratches on the lens cover will just make everything smudgy. It'll look like there's Vaseline on the lens all the time. It's very frustrating when that happens to a camera. Right, lots of nice clicks there. That guy's on. And it's flush with the bottom of the screen. If we had any issues where there was a gap forming down here, I would definitely need to put some double-sided tape down there. And in retrospect, that would have been a good idea. Um, however, that is sitting flush, so I'm satisfied that we don't need to. Excellent. Right, let's put the laptop back together again, and then we're all finished. I've just remembered we need to put some new thermal paste on this as well. There we go, everyone. One fixed laptop. Uh, so uh, thank you for being a very respectful audience tonight. Uh, even in the face of adversity, um, I think we got there in the end and you were ever so quiet. I'm very proud of all of you. You didn't think I'd leave you hanging, did you? I have a sense of humor. I'm not a monster. Anyway, past that, that is one fixed laptop. So, um, came in looking like a no post, actually just needed a new screen. Uh, so that's all there was to it. And if you do encounter one of these, doing the uh, glass only repair, uh, when I say glass only, I mean digitizer and LCD, um, actually okay on this one. Normally I wouldn't opt for a repair like this, but um, uh, I'm very happy with the way that this one went down. Um, just a friendly reminder though, 
although I replaced the uh, digitizer and the LCD at the same time, if you look around, you can still often find um, just the digitizer only. So just the front glass. You cannot do that on its own on a touchscreen laptop. The LCD has to be bonded to the digitizer. Otherwise, you will have air gaps between the digitizer and the LCD, and that will cause erratic touchscreen input all the time. So don't try and do absolute glass only repair. The most you should ever attempt is what I did here, which was LCD and digitizer. And just for good measure, as you can see, the touchscreen works just fine. So in any case, thank you very much for watching. As always, thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon uh, and also Twitch uh, and also the YouTube channel members as well, who I don't get to mention very often. Thank you to everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.